this series, we're going to be learning about SvelteKit and Svelte 3. And to do that, we're going to be building a Pokedex app. So you can view all the Pokemon, you can catch them, you can search them, you can filter them by their region, you can view them individually and rename them, and you can look at all of your caught Pokemon. And if you want to, you can release some of them. You can follow along at js-pokemon.com or use the YouTube playlist. You already know how to follow along with YouTube playlists. And if you're following there, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're following along at js-pokemon.com, then you can see we already have the lessons listed out. You can go into individual lessons and you can go to the code branch and see what exactly we've done during the video. You can also sign up for the mailing list while you're there. And if I decide to go forward with the original plan, you'll be able to find the same app being built in other frameworks. So why would you want to use Svelte in particular? The short answer is that it is really nice to use. So look at the developer satisfaction rankings. This is way better than current React, Vue, or uh, Angular. And this result holds up over multiple surveys. Here you can see Svelte taking second place to Phoenix, which is not a JavaScript framework. This is a larger survey here. Now, if you take these two data points, you might look at Svelte and think, wow, this is the most popular JavaScript framework, and it is among the developers who use it. However, the downside is that that number of developers is still fairly small. And so here you can see, and sorry for the confusing coloring, I couldn't get it to uh, display the ones I wanted. You can see that the number of Svelte downloads, this 414,000, is significantly less than React and Vue. We see a similar data point here, comparing the number of React developers and number of Svelte developers. Traditionally, this would have been a big problem. However, a lot of libraries are now going multi-framework. So this is auth.js, which used to be nixdoth.js. As you can see, now it works for SvelteKit and Solid Start, as well as Nixt. And it's coming to the other framework soon. Same with the TanStack, which has TanStack Query, which used to be called React Query, TanStack Table, which used to be called React Table, TanStack Router, which React Router is something different, so I'm not sure what they used to call this, and several others which are still React only. So why does everyone love Svelte once they've used it? So it really boils down to two things. One, the developer experience is super nice. As they say on the front page, you can write less code and you get to get rid of a lot of the state management libraries, which for me at least are some of the most painful parts of working in the other frameworks. You also get really fast code by compiling your code instead of shipping everything. And let's explain what this means, because this is also one of the reasons that a lot of people don't like Svelte on a philosophical level. So for the other frameworks, it says React here, but this applies to the other frameworks, I believe. So you have your components, you ship your components and the engine to the browser, and then the browser runs all of it. In Svelte, you take your components and then you compile down those components using Svelte to a smaller set of JavaScript that runs directly on the browser. So instead of shipping your entire component and an engine and running it all on the browser, you pre-compile it down. And so you ship less code and you ship faster code. And this is really great for the developer. It's really great for the end user. However, this has been a stumbling block historically for some developers because what gets shipped 
in production is not the same code that you write. So this is what gets shipped. And if you look real close, you can uh, eventually find the code that you've written somewhere. Uh, yeah, this somewhat resembles what I wrote, but yeah, it's definitely not the same. However, they now ship a file. You can see it has a uh, question mark after it. That is what you wrote. So this gets compiled down to this. And uh, this, you can still inspect it and debug it. So here we've caught it here. We can get all our variables there. So some people still may not like this on a deep philosophical level, but for a practical purpose, there's no reason not to use Svelte because of the compiler. And the number of people who don't like compilers, uh, a lot of it's because of the popularity of TypeScript. The number of people who just can't stand compilers is going down. So if you're excited to learn SvelteKit, let's get started. There are two ways to do this. One, you can go to js-pokemon.com and you can click on the lesson you wanna learn and watch the video there, look at the code, and sign up for the mailing list so that you can get an email whenever new videos are released. The other way is through YouTube. You can go to this playlist and play through all of them and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can see when new videos are released. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.